that said, I'm going to bring on Angelo here. He has mentioned before, Angelo is a staff technical support engineer specializing in Pareto Palo Alto Networks. And with that, Angelo, I'm going to hand the show off to you. Thank you, Charles. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Angelo, and uh, I will be your speaker for today. Uh, we will discuss uh, the architecture of Global Protect, as well as some troubleshooting techniques on how you would uh, start your troubleshooting when you have issues with Global Protect. Now, okay, let me share my screen. Okay. All right. Let me know if all of you can see my screen. Yep, we can see it for you. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, so we'll be focusing on the architecture of Global Protect, where you're going to check for logs and what logs, uh, what kind of uh, log entries you're going to look for. Uh, but what we will not focus on is the specific log for, say, uh, a SAML error. So we, we will not be covering that. So for today, the first half, uh, we'll, we'll go through the architecture, the connection flow, and how Global Protect works, just to discuss and give you an idea of uh, how it works. And then if we still have time today and then start of tomorrow, we will discuss the some case studies with some demonstrations on my side. Okay. And without further ado, uh, slideshow. All right. Angelo, you can Sorry, go ahead and kill the video if you want. Sorry? You can go ahead and kill your video if you want. Oh, right. Uh, hold on. Okay. There we go. All right. So our agenda are go is going to be the Global Protect components, some certificate management, the discussion of the Global Protect connections, how it uh, connects to the portal, when does it, when would it connect to the gateway, and what happens while it's connecting to the portal and the gateway, um, authentication discussions, and some debugging. Right. So to start with, we have three components for Global Protect. We have the Global Protect portal, the gateway, and then the endpoint software. Uh, where is it? Okay, no. So the portal is going to be the first point of contact for your endpoint client. That will be either your Global Protect agent or your app on your phone. Uh, the portal serves as a central point of intelligence. So it will, the portal will contain some settings on how the application should behave. Should it connect on demand? Uh, after user uh, a user logon and uh, and certain things like that, as well as it will contain the the list of gateways where the tunnels will be established, and then the the double protect gateways are the endpoint of the tunnels, as well as your uh, on the other end of the tunnel is going to be your client software or your app. Okay. We also support uh, third-party clients for Android, iOS. Uh, we, we support the built-in Android and iOS uh, VPN clients. Uh, we also support StrongSwan and VPNC. For our clients on Windows and Mac, then we have some installers for those. And then we also have some uh, specific app for Android, iOS, Chrome OS, and Windows, Windows UWP. Okay. Now, some license uh, concerns. If if you need some hip checks, um, mobile app endpoints for iOS and Android. Uh, if you're going to use endpoints for Linux, if you're if you're going to need IPv6 support as well as clientless VPN and split tunneling, uh, sp split tunneling based on domain, process, and video streaming applications, you will need a subscription for that or a license. Otherwise, you can set up and use Global Protect with no uh, license requirements. Okay, and then you might also ask, uh, where can you install the Global Protect app? Which X auth clients are supported, and what features does the Global Protect uh, does Global Protect support? So we have this link 
this link for you. Um, uh, Charles, will I will be sharing the, we'll, we can share the, the PDF version of the slides, right? Absolutely, yeah, that's, that'd be perfect. Okay. okay, so you can take a screenshot of this, uh, but later on we'll be sharing the, uh, the PDF version of these slides. If you have any of these questions, where will you be? Where can you install Global Protect? Um, you just follow this link here. Okay. Now, the connections. First uh, thing that the Global Protect client will do is connect to the portal, and then it will retrieve uh, the configuration to the client. So that will include the gate list of gateways, as well as how the app should behave. As I mentioned, uh, I, your settings in the portal will contain a pre-logon or is it a user logon or on-demand type of logon and any other settings that you uh, that will that's available in the portal. After the config is retrieved by the client, it will go through the list of gateways and test which gateway has the has the best connection. So you have your uh, least latency. Once it determines that, it will create a tunnel be, uh, between itself and that gateway. And then from there on, you have your uh, tunnel established between the client and the gateway. Okay. The VPN tunnel can be established with an internal gateway as well. By, um, by default, you don't have to do this for an internal gateway. Uh, but you can, uh, when you do not use a, a VPN tunnel for an internal gateway, then the traffic is not going, it's just not going to be encrypted. But since it's, uh, the traffic is going through your internal network anyway, that's not a major concern. <clears throat> I also have, as I mentioned before, we can use third-party clients which are connecting to the gateway by I or IPsec. And then location discovery can be done using the internal host detection. Uh, but this is not a requirement if you are only using a, an external gateway. If you want to, in, to use internal gateways, uh, you will need to enable internal host detection so that the machine can or the uh, GP agent can determine if it's in an internal or an external network. Okay. Next would be the connection flows. So the first uh, connection that is established between the client and the portal is the client verifying the reachability and verifying the certificate of the portal. This will end with a close notify. This is an SSL connection. After, the, uh, after those uh, checks are done, um, the client and the portal, as well as the gateway, will communicate via HTTP messages. And the first HTTP message that the client sends to the portal after the initial connection is going to be the pre-login message. Uh, take note, uh, this is not pre-logon. Th this is uh, different from pre-logon. Uh, when you're going through the logs, pay attention to the pre-login uh, pre phase of the connection. So during the pre-login phase, the client will report its OS, uh, what, what its OS is, its host ID, and then Kerberos support, and the portal will respond with an authentication message and the client will either respond uh, will respond to that message with uh, an authentication cookie or by sending its credentials also take note uh, take note of the this part of the post message uh, we will go through that later on uh, when we go through the firewall when we're troubleshooting but so this part of the post message indicates that this is the connection between the client and the portal. And then the, this part of the post message indicates that this is the pre-login pre -login to the portal. Okay. Once a pre-login is uh, complete, there will be a get config post message wherein the client sends its credentials or auth cookies, and the portal will respond with its configuration, certificate, the connection method, uh, the gateway list, the app settings, and so on. And optionally, if you have configured uh, 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 authentication over it via auth cookies, the portal will send the cookie to the client. Okay. 
And then the client performs network discovery using the host detection it configured and determines the network type, whether it's external or internal. Since, the, uh, since at this point the client already has a list of the gateways, it'll start probing, uh, start checking the gateway connectivity and verifying the uh, certificate for the gateways on the list that is received. And then it will decide which gateway has the, uh, which gateway is best or has the best connection. From there, we will have a similar pre-login uh, pre phase for the gateway. Uh, do take note of this part of the post message. This is now SSL VPN, indicating that we are now in the gateway, uh, that the client is now communicating with the gateway. And then similar to the pre-login uh, from, uh, from the portal, the client will report its OS, its host ID, its Kerberos support, and then the gateway will respond with an authentication message. And the client will respond by sending a post login, uh, post login message, sending its credentials or auth cookies. And then the gateway will respond with a list of arguments such as the auth cookie, uh, tunnel required, and a few others. Okay. So remember that's the that's a post login phase or between the client and the, the gateway. After that, the client will send a uh, get config message asking for its IP address, uh, preferred IP addresses, and the gateway will respond with the client network parameters, such as the IP addresses, uh, DNS routes, uh, DNS servers, routes, and then the tunnel connection parameters, whether you're uh, it's going to use SSL or IPsec. And then after that, if you have uh, if you have enabled IPsec, the Global Protect will always try IPsec first on port 4501. That's UDP 4501. If it cannot establish uh, IPsec over 4501, it will fall back to 443. Um, if you did not enable uh, IPsec, then it'll Global Protect will just immediately use. 443 to negotiate the tunnel. And then you have another message here, which is get SSL tunnel connect SSL VPN. Okay, after that, the tunnel is now established. Okay, well, while the tunnel is now up in the background, uh, the client will send a post hip report check to the gateway asking whether the gate, uh, if the gateway needs a fresh hip report from the client. So the message will contain an MD5 sum of the report. And if that hash is different from what the gateway has, it will request the client to send pull report. So the gateway will respond with either with a yes or a no. And then again, pay attention to the message post hip report. That is the uh, client sending the hip report to the gateway. Okay, uh, after that, the uh, traffic will just flow over the tunnel and whatever policies you have uh, configured for, for, the, for your VPN clients will take over and then traffic is now going, over, uh, going back and forth in the background. And then eventually, the client will disable the GP agent or the, or the app, either by shutting down their computer or just directly disabling the app. And then we will go through the uh, tunnel termination phase. There will be more uh, HTTP, HTTP messages. Um, <clears throat> so the client will send a post agent message. Uh, this, this, this is going to tell the gateway that the client is disabling the GP app together with a log out comment. And then there's going to be a post uh, logout message. The client is now logging out. And again, the gateway will, will respond with a success status. And then at that point, the, <clears throat> the tunnel is now, or the, like, the tunnel is now uh, torn down and the, v, the VPN is now no, no longer functional. So when we're troubleshooting and when, you're, when we're looking at logs, 
we will go through these different uh, connection phases. You have a pre-login, uh, get config. Uh, that is how we uh, break down the global protect logs that we're looking at. So as an example of that, here is GP log. Okay. Oh. Log. Uh, login starts. So you will notice we have multiple logs where you you you're going to see portal pre login starts. So that's the phase of the connection with where this is taking place. So you have your client reporting your OS, reporting its host ID, and then the portal is sending an, an authentication message. Uh, log in starts. What else do we have? Portal pre-login. OK, so this one doesn't have the full logs. But what you would see is that you will have a portal pre-login and then the actual portal login. And then you will have the gateway pre-login and then the actual gateway uh, login phases of the connection. Later on, when we, uh, when we check uh, some case studies, we should be able to see some of those logs. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Let me check. We did just have two pop up, actually. Um, which filter should be used in the GP logs to find the issue with GP connection? Okay, yeah, I'm getting which filter should we should use in GP logs to find the issue with the GP connection? Um, that, that depends on uh, what issue you're facing. And then if you're seeing uh, an, any, any certificate related message when you connect to your uh, global protect, then use that uh, use that message that you're seeing. If you also know the specific uh, the specific name of your certificate, you can use that as well. As an example, let me share my screen again here. Uh, yes. Okay. Certificate. Uh, here we have, what's my certificate name? Okay, certificate verification. Certificate store. Uh, okay, where is my, okay, so here is my domain name here. Uh, my certificate, check server certificate. Okay, you can use, you can use your domain, your FQDN address for your portal. Um, but I would suggest try to determine at which connection phase the connection is failing. Um, you would first start with the pan GP event logs. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about different types of logs. But as an, as an example here, the pan GP event logs is going to be in a high level overview of what's going on with the app. So here you can see uh, things happening uh, in the, uh, for global protect no network connectivity. So these are multiple attempts from me trying to connect to Global Protect. Uh, you'll, you can also see that the Global Protect service started. So this will give you a timestamp of where you should start looking. So if you don't have uh, any filter or keyword that you're looking for, start with the pan GP event and then start with the timestamp that, uh, uh, that's, that's related to what you're looking for. Once you have your timestamp, you can use use that in your GP logs and filter. What do I have? Uh, this is doesn't have twenty twenty four. So just match the format of the date, and then you can you can filter for logs during that time. So here I'm using Notepad plus um, plus. Most of you are familiar with it. If not, um, try to learn how to use it because it has this. It has a lot of features that you can use, which will simplify searching for logs. So here we have uh, the logs which were created at this specific timestamp, including the, milli the milliseconds there. If you don't want the milliseconds, you can just remove those. And then 
no, uh, you need to match the format of the date. And then there I have every log from, from 141. So that's one for, uh, 1 p.m. 41 minutes. So that's going to be logs, any logs within that time. So that's how you can start, uh, start your troubleshooting. Uh, let me go back to the question. Hold on. I need to stop that. Uh, da, 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 da. Which, okay. Which log files is he using? Uh, Christina, for this one, this is uh, this is from an Apple device. So I am looking at the GP log. Later on, when we go through the case studies, um, we'll discuss the different types of logs for a Windows machine. Okay. Pan GPS or Pan GPA. Okay. So for uh, for Android and iOS, you will only have these. You will, you're not going to have a GPA or a GPS. There is uh, there's going to be just a GP and then the GP event and then a third one which is a logcat uh, logcat log. Okay. GP client GP client pass user information to the firewall for user ID mapping. Um, it doesn't pass. If you're asking whether it passes the IP and the user name pair to the firewall, uh, it it does that implicitly by virtue of the authentication. Since the firewall is authenticating the user, uh, it will receive its username. Furthermore, since the firewall has an IP address that will be given to the uh, GP. GP agent once it connects, then it will have that IP information. Um, the firewall, the the GP agent or the client does not pass that in that pair specifically, but the firewall tries to figure out that okay, this is the user name for this IP address uh, for this user IP mapping. Okay. Uh, does it? What is the significance of that UDB port in Ike? Uh, since we, we the Global Protect Client is configured is programmed to use forty five hundred one. It's 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 uh, IPsec. There's nothing special to it. It's just using a different port from the standard one, which is forty five zero zero. It's the same IPsec that you would be using if you would just if you would if you were to create an IPsec tunnel. Okay. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay. Let me go back to the slides. Thanks. You aren't sharing at the moment, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I need to stop it because when I come back here, it does that. It does an inception thing. Okay. Yeah, folks, the reason right. why he wasn't sharing is that he was trying to read the screen to actually answer your comments. It was just too difficult for him to read. That's what was going on. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. So troubleshooting global protect issues. Uh, we have some debugging resources here uh, that will be shared with you later on. And then some live articles on but what I want to discuss with you is what you should be looking at on the firewall side and what you, you should be looking at on the, <clears throat> on the client side. So on the firewall side, um, there, there is not one process responsible for Global Protect. There are different processes running in the background which, uh, which work together to, prov to provide the Global, the global Protect uh, feature. So the first one is SSL access, uh, SSL VPN access.log. This shows the SSL connection to the portal and the gateway. So remember the ones that we, we just discussed, those post messages that we, we just discussed there, that is where you will see these post messages. So if you're having issues with say, we're not receiving a HIP report, you can check that log and see if the client send a HIP report check and if it sent a HIP report uh, message. So a HIP report check and a HIP report message, those are two different things. Okay? And that way you can narrow down where uh, where your issue, uh, where you should be looking at 
expectation. Okay. Auth D is, NS is responsible for authentication, whether it be uh, local authentication, SAML, LDAP, um, Radius, all the authentication related authentication related issues, you check off D. And then SSL manager, if you're using OCSP or CRL to verify the cert, uh, certificate status, this is where, where you will see the result of those uh, uh, CRL checks. For user ID, uh, this is for user mapping and HIP reports. RAS manager, this is for the tunnel slash client configuration when you're using the GP agent. So when the tunnel is established, you will be looking at uh, RAS Manager. Ike Manager is for any third-party clients, uh, not, global, not the Global Protect client or the agent. Uh, if you want to see if the, how the tunnel is being established, you would look at Ike Manager. And then you also have some debug uh, options here for these different uh, processes. One um, one interesting uh, debug option here is for Ike, which is a debug Ike PCAP on. Um, this is not just useful for Global Protect, but also for your generic point-to-point uh, -point IPsec tunnels. Uh, when you do this, you will be capturing the unencrypted packet uh, just after they are decrypted or just before the packets are encrypted. So if you want to see unencrypted packets going over your tunnel, uh, say if the tunnel is already up, then you can turn uh, you can turn this debug on. Okay. And then some <clears throat> uh, data plane debug logs. Uh, you can enable flow basic, flow tunnel. If you are dealing with SSL uh, uh, with an SSL connection, you will need a proxy all. Um, SSL all, and then for TCP segments for SSL proxy, you will need enable TCP FPTCP. The common ones that you will be using is Flow Basic and uh, Flow Tunnel. But if you've disabled IPsec, then you will be you will be enabling proxy all and then SSL all. All right. <clears throat> so there are two different. Uh, issues which, which can come up with Global Protect. So either the tunnel is not coming up or the tunnel is up, but there is no traffic going through the tunnel. Um, what you would do in the first scenario is you, can, you would check your system logs and your traffic counters. The first thing that you need to check is, is the client uh, sending traffic to the either the portal or the gateway? And is the gateway receiving that? Uh, you would run a packet capture on your client as well as on the firewall, whether it be the portal or the gateway that, it, that the client is connecting to, to determine if uh, the, excuse me, <clears throat> to determine if the traffic uh, is reaching uh, the gateway and the gateway's res response is reaching the, the client. So you will have your packet capture through the CLI. You will also you you might also use uh, global counters, and we will not be discussing what global counters are for this topic. We'll focus on global protect, but we will have another uh, fuel workshop discussing how you would troubleshoot uh, data plane uh, issues, wherein we go more in depth on how you would use global counters. Okay. Um, once you are trouble, uh, what if the tunnel is up and you're checking if you are receiving packets on uh, over the tunnel, uh, you will need to check your traffic logs. You will need to verify your routing tables, and similarly, you will need to try and run packet captures and also check your HIP logs. When you run a packet capture on the first scenario, you are looking you are looking to run a capture on the physical interface of the uh, client machine. When you are running packet captures on the second scenario, you are looking to run the packet captures on the virtual interface as well as the physical interface of the client machine. So 
in the first scenario, you will have you will be using the filters. Uh, you you will be using the I, the public IP addresses as filters for both machines. On the second scenario, you will all uh, in addition to your public IPs, you will be using the private IPs, uh, which was assigned to the tunnel, and the private IP that the client machine is trying to access on the uh, on the server side. Okay. All right. Global uh, Global Protect Troubleshooting Framework. So, where is the issue? Is it at the client, uh, or is it during a tunnel setup? Is the SSL communication acceptable? How can you check it? Uh, what is the certificate status? How do we check the certificate validity? And what does a valid client certificate required signify? And how can we check authentication issues? Okay. So here is a troubleshooting progression when you have a global protect issues. So is the, tab, is the tunnel established or not? If it is, then troubleshoot that as a transit traffic issue. That's where you will be the, uh, applying a data plane troubleshooting techniques. If, it is, if the tunnel is not established, is the issue related to authentication? If it is, check your system logs uh, and check your authentication profile, as well as the <clears throat> as well as the logs that we previously mentioned, your auth D logs here. That this is on the firewall side to see what's going on. Okay, slide show. Okay. If, if the issue is not uh, authentication profile related, um, is it, oh, if it is authentication profile related, adjust your profile, test, and then read troubleshoot. The most common ones, a uh, most common issue that will be related to authentication profile are the allowed, uh, allowed users. So here we have an authentication profile. Uh, did you not? Authentication. Okay, here we go. So your allow list, you will you will need to check your allow list. Um, if you are using group mapping or you are specifically allowing individual users here, um, you may want to check your allow list regarding as to regarding to that specific user's scenario. If you're using groups, um, you will need to verify that the group mapping is correct on the firewall. And that the group is listing the correct uh, user users as a member of that group. If the group mapping on the firewall is missing one user, then if if that user is trying to authenticate or connect to Global Protect, then that user is not going to be able to connect to uh, to Global Protect. Also, pay attention here. One icon indicates a user. Two icons indicates a group. When you are uh, I've seen some issues before wherein the customer typed in the group name, but it showed up as just a, a one, just a just a user instead of a group. So they were under the impression that since the group name is there, then that that must be a group, and the users were, should be able to access it. Um, it would when you are using group names from your uh, AD. Try to put in the full uh, distinguished name when you are putting them in the allow list. That way, that removes the confusion of is this a user or is this a group? If you use the full DN for that group name, then there's no confusion on on the firewall's configuration that this that this is that this might be a user or should this be a group? Okay. Uh, where is my slide? Oh, you got it. Okay, we'll get back to that uh, slides. Okay. okay, if it's not authentication profile related, is it certificate related? It is. Check if your certificates are valid. Uh, <clears throat> if they are, then you will check if the required Global Protect service is running. If it is, troubleshoot that as a system service issue. If it isn't, then escalate that. Uh, you, that's when you open K 
case with tech. So how would you check if the related global protect services are running? So first, okay. So here are some of the uh, processes specifically related to global. You have your SSL VPN uh, process, RAS manager, and then Ike manager. Um, to check those, you will go to your CLI uh, and run the command show system software status. Mm, yes. Show system software status and then look for the status, look for your process and then look, look at the status of your process. Uh, RAS manager. So I have RAS manager is running. Troubleshooting the actual process on the firewall, again, that's going to be on a, for a different topic. Uh, this is just, uh, say, a segue to that while we're discussing uh, Global Protect because they're, everything is interconnected uh, when we're troubleshooting anything on the firewall. So you have troubleshooting on the management plane, troubleshooting on the data plane. So Global Protect both uh, steps on has some troubleshooting uh, uh, troubleshooting topics in the management plane as well as the data plane. So that's on the data plane, you have your packet captures. On the management plane, you have uh, your processes running in the background. Okay. Okay. If you're having issues with uh, authentication, as mentioned before, you will have your auth B log. If you're having issues with establishing a tunnel, um, check the packet captures first before you check the RAS manager log. So these logs are the, are the logs for the processes, uh, for the processes um, working together to provide the global protect feature. And then in addition to these three, we have your SSL VPN, RAS manager, and an Ike manager. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, so if the certificates are not valid, um, are you using OCS or CRL? If you are not, then reissue the certificates or regenerate the certificates. And is the issue resolved? If it's not, then you also you then go check if the Go Protect services are running and then follow from there. If you are using OCSP or CRL, you need to verify that the communication with your OCSP or CRL server is working. That's you go back to running packet captures from the firewall to the OCS, uh, OCSP server uh, IP address and check if there's bidirectional communication. If, the, if if the communication is okay, then you again you go back to checking the global protect service. But if not, then troubleshoot that as a, as a host inbound issue. Okay. Now, if it is not certificate related, uh, is the communication with the authentication servers uh, working? So um, we I've had a couple of cases before wherein the customer was performing their packet captures diligently, but they were focusing on they were focusing on the client side. Here you have okay. So here we have the client, the firewall, and then the auth, the server. What they were experiencing was there was a delay, there was a delay in the authentication of exactly 30 seconds from when the client initiates the connection before, uh, before being asked for their user, username and password. So what they were doing was they were focusing on their troubleshooting here. Um, they were running packet captures. They were checking packet captures. The, la the latency for the captures were, 
were not amounting to 30 seconds. But what they what they forgot was you still have the connection on this side wherein <clears throat> when once the client authenticates, the firewall is not the one who's uh, unless you're using a local user, the firewall is not the one who's authenticate who's actually authenticating that user. It will send an uh, authentication request to your to the authentication server, and then the server should respond. So what was happening there was the customer had two authentication servers. Uh, their primary one was not responding. So all the traffic was just timing out. Um, it was unidirectional. No response was uh, being received from the first server. After this times out, uh, after 30 seconds, then that's when the firewall tries sending the authentication request to the secondary server. And then the server responds immediately. Yeah. So don't forget to uh, don't forget the other components in uh, in a certain feature or function when you're using uh, Global Protect. It's not just a client and the firewall. There's also your authentication servers and many other. If if you have a network in between here, then you might have other. Uh, other devices involved other than just a firewall and the server. You will have your switches and you will have your other firewalls and routers as well. Okay. 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 Uh, if the communication is okay, then we go back to we go back to checking if the Google Protect service is running and then Troubleshooting that as a system service issue if it is running and opening a case with tap if it isn't. So when you do, uh, when you're at this point uh, and you notice that the global protect service is running, you, you can restart the service. Debug, um, debug process. No. Find command keyword. Hold on. Uh, process De debug data plane no. debug software debug software start process okay uh huh okay you don't like it Love it with the live demos, don't you? <laughs> yeah. And it just so happens live. <laughs> it always so does. inevitable, yeah. It would, yeah. Uh, okay. I, don't, I don't think there's a single one of us on this call who hasn't had that happen at least once to us, yeah. <laughs> you check and make sure it's running before, before the event, and then it just doesn't. A debug software, restart cross, restart. Start the process, and then uh, pick up the process that you're uh, that you're having issues with. If it's off the that's stopped, then restart off the process. Fail follow yes. Empty log. You'll notice as uh, I would suggest you have multiple windows open when you're troubleshooting in the CLI because you can see there uh, once you do something. You don't want to um, say have any delays before you do it, and then seeing the output for that specific uh, process. So, say if you're authenticating, um, you ask the user to authenticate now, and then uh, five seconds later, you will start. You want to check the logs. Um, that's uh, quite of a delay, and then during that delay, it's going to give you a lot of logs that might not be relevant to you. So when you're, when you're troubleshooting, uh, do use these uh, softwares that are available. You have, there are a lot of softwares that are available which can, uh, which can manage PuTTY or your CLI, uh, your CLI instance. 
as you can see here, I can put them side by side. I can even have four windows here, like are in quadrants, so that when I when I ask a user to do something, I have four windows uh, checking the logs as they uh, as they are generated. Okay, uh, you should be still, I'm going to, oh, okay, that's still alive, okay, good. All right, oh, um, any questions so far? Let me check, uh, okay, let's stop that. Uh, GPS, GPA, okay, does it line pass you? No, we've done that. Uh, what significance UDP? If a client can connect using IPsec, but can I find SL, which folder to use for it? Um, okay. Ah, okay, there we go. So did that. So answered that. With an always on VPN config uh, via certificate one point connection. Okay, we have got that. Okay. Yeah, it looks like all the questions so far have actually been answered. Okay. Nine times. Okay, good. Turn of packet captures. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Moving on. Oh no 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 no. Uh, share. Yes. Okay. We have. Okay. We have four minutes. Uh, where were we? Oh, this will be quick. Yeah, we can finish four minutes here, and then we can start. Uh, the demonstration. Oh, we can have a break and then start the case study. All right. So configuration checklist, you have your licenses, your interfaces, uh, your certificates, your certificate profiles, your authentication, your portal and gateway profiles, uh, your HIP, and then if you're going to use HIP, you will need to create your HIP objects or profiles and then apply them to your security rules. And then, yeah, configure the appropriate security rules with the profiles. If you want to check for logs on the GUI, uh, there is a separate global protect uh, log. Excuse me. <clears throat> There's a separate global protect uh, logs. Just click on that, and then you will have your global protect logs available there. Previously, the global protect logs were under the system logs and you had to filter them but um, that was on older versions of panos uh, global protect commands on the firewall <clears throat> you have show global protect uh, global protect just show the settings for global protect you have global protect uh, show global protect global protect gateway to check your gateway your on time objects uh, global protect mdm portal and satellite if you're specifically looking at, uh, at uh, one gateway, you have you can use these commands here: satellite, current current satellite, current users, um, flow, and then flow site site, and then the gate. If you want to list the, if you want the list of global protect way, uh, global protect gateway configurations, you have gateway option here. Uh, for the current and previous users, you also have that option in the GUI. Uh, ta -ta -ta. No, not here. So you, all you have to do is go to Gateway, and then over here at Info, <coughs> there will be, of course, did you show up? No, you don't. Okay. Peace. You will have your link over here. Click on remote users, and we have your current users and your previous users. Okay. This is 101. 101 is oh, 16 yesterday. Okay. Wasn't expecting that, but anyway. All right. Um, troubleshooting authentication. As I mentioned, Auth B is responsible for anything authentication related. That's not just for Global Protect. Anything that the, where the firewall needs to authenticate, uh, either 
the admin users through the GUI or the CLI, global protect users, uh, what else do we have? Uh, authenticating the firewall to your LDAP if you are if you are using uh, agentless user ID. So you will have you will also see your authentication logs there. So anything authentication related, that's all it be. And here you will see an example of a local user. Uh, auth request v61 gp auth user 11. Authentication succeeded for a local user, user 11, and so on. User 11 authenticated. If you have LDAP or SAML, there will be SAML and LDAP related messages, but nonetheless, it will identify the user and then it will identify whether it's an LDAP or a, or a SAML type of authentication. Um, pay attention to the messages that you will see when the authentication is happening. Because when, you are tro when you're troubleshooting LDAP or SAML, um, you will see some SAML specific or LDAP specific messages there. And your goal is to get that specific message and then try to find out what that means. If it's not available in our KB or in the live community, then that you can use that message to open a case with Jack. And that way you, you can get, the case will get more traction at the start rather than just uh, if you would open a case, say hey, we're, having, we're having authentication issues, please uh, here, here are all the logs from Global Protect uh, kindly help us. So rather than that, in that in that case, the engineer would still have to go through one try to isolate what the timestamp is because once you when you give us global protect logs, it's going to be like this. And in your case, if it's a production network, that's just going to be more lines in there for us to assist. Through. There's what I'm trying to say is there's a lot of noise that we need to take out to try and identify where the issue is. Okay, but if you already have that message and you already found it and then share it when you open the case, then we can, that case will have more traction uh, at the beginning compared to if you didn't share it. Okay. Next, uh, CLI commands for yeah, Global Protect, you have your Show global protect gateway current users. Uh, show global protect gateway flow. Let's try that. Show global protect gateway flow is where is one one. This is okay. No. Show global protect gateway gateway in this. Hold on. Show go protect gateway flow. Yeah. Show go protect gateway flow. Okay. So here I have one user. Uh, test gateway n tunnel ninety nine. Show on. You have your tunnel uh, your, your flow ID here. Uh, you will use that tunnel ID. Hold on. Tunnel ID one. If you want to check that specific uh, gateway tunnel, so we have test gateway dash n. It will always append n dash n at the end. Uh, my config here is just test gateway. Is my local IP, the tunnel interface, and so on. Um, I have one flow going on right now because I have one user uh connected this is the remote ip of the user this the ip address of the physical interface of the user this is the ip address on or the global protect interface and this is the ipsec spi let's see if we can find that in uh, the ic logs so less mp log ic manager and we can't okay so it's not logged there uh, most likely you can uh, but uh, you can only search for the SPI with keyword uh, uh, let's find my keyword logging level 
bug, so reset level, oh no, show. Show level service tank. Oh, it's an info. Okay, let's increase that. Let's see if we can get more information. I, uh, that's the okay. Let's restart that uh, win connected refresh. Think following. Okay, what's going on? Refresh. Adapter options, okay, close this. Ethernet is up, that's why one, no, no, that's why. Okay. Uh, Win04, oh, sorry, no, that's not what I want. This is, uh, where, 101. Close that. Yeah, we're on 101. Good, 101. Is it Lab Boy? Oh, it's Lab Boy. Okay, we go to Lab Win. Lab Win console. Okay, disconnect. Ike, still nothing. So, Angela, if I can okay. briefly summarize what you're doing, you're you've gone ahead and just you you've increased the logging level. Is that what you're trying to do right now? Yeah, for Ike. So. Okay. Uh, just an, uh, just for an, uh, as an experiment. So this is IP, an IPsec SPI. Um, the Ike manager is responsible for any IPsec accounts, but since it was in info before, I suspect that we're not seeing this SPI in the logs because it was in a lo in a less verbose logging level. Okay. So we've cool. increased the the verbosity, and then we'll try to see if we're going to find any relevant connection logs in here. Fantastic. I just wanted to confirm I understood what was going on. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. OK, connecting. OK, still nothing. Oh, finding. That's not yet connecting. OK, it's still finding. Still nothing. What's going on with RAS? That's taking too long. Okay. All right. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh -huh. Nothing in Ike. Let's see what happened with RAS. Uh, oh, hello. Everything going on here. Uh, oh, five. What time is it? Oh, oh, seven. 
Okay, yeah, so seven of them. Uh, they follow yes, MP log, uh, RAS manager. Okay, okay, there's my user, uh, host ID, serial number, preferred IP. Okay, so you're using a global protect agent. And if you want to see how the tunnel is coming up, go to RAS manager. If you're using a third party uh, application to connect by IPsec to global protect, then you go to IT manager. All right, and with that, we can have a quick bio break, a 10 minute break. And then once we, uh, after we come back, we'll discuss some case studies and uh, some live demonstrations. Fantastic, everyone will be back at 18 minutes after the hour. So go ahead and take 10, thank you. All right, um, I am still sharing. Okay, there we go. Yep. I'll go ahead and share for a little bit. Thank you very much. We'll see everyone in 10. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get started up again here in just a second. I believe I heard Angelo come back. Are you ready to get going there, sir? Yep, Charles, I'm ready. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah. Turn off my screen share. Yeah. You're going to back over. Yep. Uh, yours. Screen share. Okay, just a few more slides to finish. Okay. Okay. Uh, collecting the logs is easy. So open a uh, right-click on the Global Protect on your uh, tray, and then click on Settings, and then select Troubleshooting. And then depending on which uh, start with debug level logs, by default, it will also be se uh, selected anyway. Um, but if, you, if we do tell you to gather dump level logs, before you recreate the issue, make sure that dump that the dump level is selected, then you recreate the issue. Because if you recreate the issue, select dump level, and then you collect the logs, that's not going to be, that's not going to show up uh, to show the dump level logs. So you need to enable dump level first, recreate the issue, and then collect the logs. Okay. Uh, so for collecting the global protect agent logs um, on on a Windows device, you will have a lot of these logs here. But the ones that you will be focusing on are PanGPA, PanGPS.log, and then PanGPA, PanGPS, where is PanG, uh, PanGP event.log. Uh, PanGP event, as I mentioned before, this is going to give you a high level overview of what the application or the client is doing. Is it connecting? Did it fail to connect? And so on. But, uh, your aim or the information that you're looking for in PanGP event is the timestamp. Narrow down the timestamp. Now, the significance of PanGP and PanGPS is that anything that you interact with, with the actual application itself, uh, and say if there is an authentication pop-up, that where, where you need to enter your username and password, the logs for that pop-up message, say if it's a SAML uh, and, and then a browser, an uh, authentication browser pops up, the log for that uh, browser that pops up is going to be in PanGPA. So anything you see, anything that you interact with, those logs will be in PanGPA. Now, <clears throat> the since PanGPA or PanGP agent talks to the PanGPS or the PanGP service, um, once you enter your password, the, pass the, the relevant process responsible for actually performing, uh, sending that password over to the authentication server is going to be PanGPS. It's going to be PanGPS. So PanGPS is going to talk to the authentication server, negotiate whatever, uh, send, send any what. Uh, send any message that's relevant to the authentication method that you're doing, that will be uh, handled by PanGPS. So SAML messages, LDAP messages, that's going to be PanGPS. So, so if you're having issues with, say, a, a window that's not popping up, you will check PanGPA. So if you're having issues with anything that you see or anything that you interact with, that's going to be PanGPA. Anything happening in the background, so though the the messages that we mentioned before, 
that's going to be handled by PAN GPS. Okay. And then for in depth for more in-depth troubleshooting, we may check your IP config. This is similar to just running the IP config on man prompt. Your NIC config, uh, netstat, is this also similar to running a netstat in the command prompt. When you gather the logs, the uh, the GP client will gather these information so that without having to ask you to show it to us, we can get uh, an idea of, excuse me, <clears throat> we can get an idea of how your, how this machine is configured. Okay. Uh, debug trace at the level, okay. Yep, so CA, go for the certificates, you will have your, uh, I, this is still down. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll just do this instead. Go to the case studies. Um, certificates, certificates. Certificate. Uh, do I have chain? Ah, there you go. Um, your certificates should chain up properly here. Um, although you're seeing this from the Windows uh, side, um, when you create certificates on the firewall using, or when you import certificates on the firewall, you should be able to see them chain up properly. So the last one is the server certificate, which is used for Global Protect. Intermediate CA cert is used to sign the server certificate. And then the root CA certificate is used to sign the intermediate CA. Okay, um, what did I want to... Yeah, CA, uh, the CN and the SAN. When you're populating your certificates, do I have one? I don't have one. Okay. When you're populating your certificates or creating them, you will have your CN as a subject. Now, that down at the bottom, there is also your subject alternative name. Um, you may also want, you'd also want to populate that as well. Um, it can be the same as your CN. It can, it can also be the uh, IP address of your of, say, your Global Protect uh, Gateway or port. Now, okay, AP HIP, scan, client certificate, uh, yep. Okay, now we're, do we're done with the slides. The first thing that I want to share with you is, okay, start the video, okay. So I have Global Protect on my iPhone. Uh, this is a, this is going to be our first case study here. So I'm going and to click oh, on. We're just seeing a blank screen here. We're not seeing anything. There's no sharing. Oh, I'm I'm sharing via the webcam, Charles. Yeah, but you're you stopped screen sharing yourself. I did, yeah, but you should be able to see my webcam, right? No, it's completely dark. My webcam is dark. Yeah, just seeing a black screen right now. Oh, okay. Okay, can you see me now? Unfortunately, no. Hold on. Uh -huh. Logitech. Uh, okay, HP, X, yeah. Okay, I. Okay, I'm not sure what's going on with my webcam then. So I can't share my iPhone in any other way. Okay, let's just do this. So I have Global Protect on my iPhone. I connect and then the error message that I get is the network connection is unreachable or the gateway is unresponsive. Check your network connection and reconnect. So what I'll do is I'll send the logs over to my email so that we can dissect what's going on here. Uh, okay, send, send. OK, 
Okay, here is my, here are my logs. <clears throat> okay, just, uh, just a reminder, these are from an iPhone, so you won't have uh, the similar amount of logs uh, uh, if it was if it came from a Windows device. But we have some log sets here. We have the agent, we have event, and then now we you have need time. Screen share. Oh, right, right, right. Hold on. We're having all kinds of fun today, aren't we, folks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> here we go. Okay. So here are the logs from the iPhone. Uh, you have four, so that's compar comparatively less, way less than a Windows Windows machine, but you have your agent logs and then you have your pan GPS. Nonetheless, we have the, the important ones. We have, we have, first, let's open pan GP event and see, and try to figure out what the timestamp that we're looking at is. So I connected around this time, so 1524, so Global Protect Service has started. So the app on my phone was launched at that time. And then uh, portal login complete, 95, yeah. Address connect method of on-demand network discovery. So there's not a lot, a lot of information going on there. So we'll take a look at the PAN GPS. But the error message that I'm getting was, as I mentioned, um, the network connection is unreachable or the gateway is unresponsive. So you can use that to search your uh, GPS logs, unreachable. Uh, 1525, was it? Yeah, 1525. I have a log here at 1525. Gateway connection is unreachable. Before that happens, let me set up the second lab hold on yeah uh, enter okay hold on okay if I will You're intentionally doing something off screen, correct, Angelo? Yeah, uh, I am. Um, wanting to make sure. No so worries, I, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't let you know. So I have uh, I have another lab going on here since the, the first one was failing. So I have another lab going on here. OK. Yep, not a problem. All right, so here we have, where's the unreachable? Yeah, connection is unreachable. So let's try to find out, let's backpedal as to what's going on here. Um, the message specifically says the gateway is unresponsive. So it looks like we've gone through the the portal part of the connection, and the app is uh, going through the gateway part of the connection flow. Gateway is on. Okay, let's see what's going on here. So scrolling up. Uh, error domain 999 canceled. That doesn't really tell something, but if we run out, if we don't find anything else, then we can use that uh, for our investigation. So let's just look for something else here. Oh, I can mark that as well. Uh, okay, server trust evaluation failed. Okay, that's more informative. Server trust evaluation failed. Uh, trust evaluation properties policy requirements not met. So with those three entries there, we can start uh, Googling for, uh, or searching the, searching the KB for any issues for Global Protect with similar, uh, with a similar log message. Uh, Global Protect. Global Protect doesn't connect on iOS 13. Okay, so I'm, what iOS am I waiting for? Uh, I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm on 16. Okay. Okay. Okay, so policy requirements not met. So here we have a KB. Uh, the resolution for this is that Apple has uh, certain requirements when you're using certificates. So what's happening here is it 
uh, one of the one of the requirements is that the validity period should not be more than 825 days. So if we would take a look at the log, here is my certificate. Uh, this is my root certificate. Uh, where is my where is my it is my CN. That's my oh no, no this is my issuer. Uh, group. This is my yeah, this is my subject, this is my server certificate. You'll notice that the validity is 10 years. There are other requirements by Apple, uh, but this one is easy to find and pinpoint. So I've, I'm already past my 825 days uh, required for Apple's security requirements. So therefore, the issue here is you'll need to reissue re your certificate and you should meet the requirements for uh, Apple devices. Okay. Okay. Uh, where's my mouse? There we go. Okay. So that, that's one of my case studies in GP6, GP4, GP5. Yeah. So similarly, policy requirements are not met. Server trust evaluation failed. Oh, uh, yeah, that's a um, typo. That's coming directly from the log. Oh, it's they've corrected this. Nice. Okay, valuation. Okay, the next one. Let me see. Uh, certificates. I'm doing something off screen here for the for an Android. I'm going to reconfigure my lab for an Android device. Um, I believe someone asked this earlier. Uh, incorrect key usage, if I am not mistaken. Okay, let me just make the changes, do a commit. Okay. Okay, well that's going on. Is my lab back? Okay, it looks like it is lab boy. Um, um are you also back? You are. Okay, 136. Give me 136. Okay, uh huh. One, three, six. You're not loading. Okay, that's not loading. Um, but it is booted up, right? Okay, I can just go to Win04. Uh, we are loaded with uh, what config do we have loaded here? Um, boy. Oh, okay. No, there's something wrong with my lab. Uh, it's just shutting down. Okay, we can ignore that. You are fine. Okay, let's go to lab win. We are loaded on GP lab test. Okay. So here is another issue. We're in Double Protect would uh, constantly disconnect and re oh hold on unreachable check okay hold on one two okay zero five where is my firewall okay you're good uh, okay yep. what's my DCP DCP lease. Okay, I should be one six or one five. That's not correct. Uh, this four. Okay, where is my config portal? GP cert, uh, this is two, right? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Einstein, okay. There's something wrong with my lab. Uh, okay, uh, I just have to rely on the backup one. Okay, that one is still at, still committing. But while we're waiting for that, we'll have to go through, we'll just have to use these uh, case studies instead of the lab. Okay, but I still have another uh, demo to show you here. Okay, uh, one case study uh, could not verify server certificate. So could not verify certificate of the gateway. The portal address is, as you can see there. So what you would do here is, again, go to your PanGP event, try to find out where the timestamp is. Uh, go protect service started, similarly to what we discussed. Portal login complete, connect method, network discovery, and then gateway could not verify the certificate of the gateway. Again, here, it's giving you a clue as to where you should be focusing on the connection. In this instance, since I have the portal and the gateway on the same firewall, um, you know where you should be looking. But in your instances, in your production deployments, um, you might have multiple gateways. So this would be a key uh, or a clue as to where you should start looking. So you do not go to the portal, focus on the gateway. Now, going to the PanGPS logs, uh, you have your pre-login, so similarly what we discussed, pre-login. Uh, and then at, down at the bottom, uh, you'll see a check server's certificate, checking the SSL connection. Uh, uh, the network is reachable, just like how we uh, pre-login. There we go. Okay. And the host name, you can see here, check server certificate, certificate of the server. Is signed by the trusted root CA. Uh, host name does not match sub alt or no sub alt name. Pull back to CN. Host name is not a not match GP lab test. So what's going on here? Uh, the portal address I'm trying to access is GP lab test. And for some reason, uh, the subject is also GP lab test. So you can see here uh, the CN. For the certificate, but why is it showing the host name of 17216? That's the DNS, or that's the IP address of GP Lab Test, but why would it show it as a host name? It would do that because uh, in your configuration, you need to pay attention to the uh, external or internal gateway that you configure and the address that you put in your gateway. The address that you use here should be the same address that you are using here, as well as the address that you are using here. They should all be the same. When you do this, so my the address that I'm using to access the gateway is GP Lab Test or the portal GP Lab Test. My certificates are configured for GP Lab Test, but I've configured my portal or my gateway address to be the IP address instead of the FQDN. Then you will have you will encounter this issue. So pay attention. It's a small thing that can easily be uh, overlooked, but pay attention when you're con pay attention to this when you're configuring uh, Global Protect. If if you're seeing the same error message, but it's not configuration related, again check your logs here. So what what does the log show at this point? So what 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 Host name is not matching your CN in the certificate or so. Okay. All right. Now I have my Android device. Uh, you won't be able to see this as I can share the screen, but I'm going to connect again. Is this time it's Android. Okay. And let's see if this works. Okay, I'm getting the error message, network connection is unreachable or the portal is unresponsive. Similar to the uh, iPhone error, but this time it, it, it is on Android. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to generate the logs and then copy them over to my uh, laptop here. Give me a second. Uh, email logs, save it as file. 
can delete that. Okay, that's sent. Uh, charging, no, charge. Filter, file. Uh, this PC. Commits, GP squad. Go to. Seven zip. Okay. GP support. Okay, so we have GP event and then GP log. Okay, let's see what's going on. That was around fifteen forty one. No network connectivity. Network connection is unreachable. Okay, so we go to GP log. Okay, give me fifteen forty one. Uh, okay, 1541, that's quite a lot. What time? 34. Pretty four. okay. Um, we have unreachable. Unreachable. 1534. Oh, no, 154134. Uh, oh, there you go. 154134. Unreachable. Okay. Uh, for all status invalid error, the network connection is uh, the network connection is unreachable, or the portal is unresponsive. So again, it's giving you a clue on uh, which phase of the connection you should be looking at. So we have <coughs> the portal connection part. Okay, uh, going back up, uh, let's mark this. Okay, portal status is invalid portal. Uh, reading portal config. That's not uh, failed to pre-log in. Okay. That's part of the connection phase. Uh, URL is, okay, that's the URL. And as you can see, the pre-login message there. Um, these messages here, sadly, oh, it's a live, okay. Um, this, can... no, no, no. No, it's not live. This web server log. SSLPN. Okay, so this is one of the logs. Uh, where is it? That you can check on the firewall side. Now, uh, uh, now we won't be able to see uh, uh, actually the relevant logs for the Android connection, but as you can see here, we have we have a post. Okay, we have post SSL pre login, post SSL login. So this is where those things that we talked about before are happening. Pre-login, get config, uh, SSL VPN pre-login compared to global protect pre-login. So on the firewall side, you can you can check at which phase you are having an issue on by paying attention to these post messages as well as the actual uh, path of the post message. So SSL pre-login. SSL login. So this is uh, the gateway phase, uh, specifically the login phase. And then you also have your, remember the hip report. So hip report check. So we have a hip report check and a hip report ESP. So if you're having issues, you can check if, uh, if the firewall is receiving the post message from the GP client. So remember, this is a post message from the client to the firewall sending a HIP report. This is a post message from the client to the firewall sending a HIP report check asking the firewall uh, to respond if you need a HIP report or not. Okay. So from there, you can verify if, if the firewall is receiving the HIP report or not. Okay. Uh, okay, one more. Oh, going back to the Android thing. Okay, Android, not that. Okay, that's my address. Uh, okay, so going up, mm, get response. There's a post, re login. Address is failed to connect, cannot get the server certificate. Okay. Okay. 4127, uh, portal pre login. Okay, so we do not need to go farther than this. So we can start uh, 
we can our boundary for checking the logs is going to be here. We we don't want to go further up from here. Okay. Uh, we didn't see anything relevant here. Get response post, server URL is, fail to pre-log in to portal, set state invalid portal. Why would it say it's invalid, invalid portal, connection unreachable. So as you will see here, it's not really unreachable, but it just, there's something going on with the status of the portal. Since we are in the portal pre-login phase, so remember what is happening in the pre-login phase. So here, uh, there will be a, uh, before that, there will be a certificate verif verification and reachability. And then uh, uh, the, the client will report its OS and the portal is expected to send the authentication message, but we're not getting through that because the portal is somehow invalid. So we can check on the, we can expect to be within this part of the connection flow. Uh, certificate verification and reachability, and then the pre-login. Okay. Uh, no, not that. Where's my other? Oh, okay. Connection, connection state disconnected. Uh, said tunnel disconnection starts. Uh, doesn't show a lot. Uh, hey, Angelo, one person pointing out in the yeah. chat that it said cannot get server cert. Oh, uh, cannot get server cert. That would be around 41. Okay. Cannot get server cert. Okay, that's an indicator, but it doesn't really show why it failed. So we can mark that and then let's check around that log and see what's going on. Check server cert return. This could be a candidate or when you open a case, you have a code there. Um, if we check that in the KB, uh, global, okay. um, zero X 400, nope, okay, so it's, Quick Google search is we don't have anything. So if you do decide to open a case, that can be, you can include that in the case. Now let's try to look around some more. Uh, value didn't, captive portal, okay. Portal detection, captive portal, okay. Uh, no client search file, get response post, re login. Mm-hmm. Fail to connect. Fail to pre-login. Set state invalid port. Okay, that's not giving me a lot. Okay. GP error notification. GP error notification. GPA. Okay. I'm gonna cheat a little bit a little bit here. Um, I'm expecting a specific error over here. Oh, we're not getting that. Okay, extension usage OID. Why am I not getting that? Okay. Uh, is my global protect? I'm just checking my app here. Uh, I have logging, I have email, okay. Okay, somehow my lab developed a new issue. Yet I did not configure it for. Okay. Go back here. Fail to pre log in. Uh, fail to pre log in. Okay. Let's do this instead. So, what we would do here, fail to pre log in. The portal is invalid. Um, okay. Fail, also, fail to get the server cert, right? The server cert. So, those are our clues. Uh, cannot get server, yeah, cannot get server certificate of 112. Cannot get the server certificate. Uh, uh, let's open this URL and let's see. Yes. Oh, uh, by the way, that's the FQDN for, for this. So uh, if anyone's wondering, that's the 
this IP is uh, has a DNS record for that for this FPDN. Okay, uh, what's going on? Cannot secure, so we can check. Oh, secure connection failed immediately. Okay, let's do. Ding. I just need the IP. What time is it? Fifty-two. Okay, uh, I'm gonna wrap this up in a bit. Oops. No. Close. Okay, try it again. Hmm. Uh, okay. HTTPS uh, zapto.org. Yeah, that is current. I might not. You should be able to reach that. Okay, for some reason it's not. Uh, go back to Firefox. It's not secure. Yeah, I know. I don't want that. PR is not showing the connection. Stop. Let's do that. I need to get it through the. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that's why I find I figured out needs to go through my global protect interface. Uh, okay, one more time. There we go. Since it's an app, client hello reset. Okay, um, client hello. We're not getting through the server hello. I was hoping to get the uh, server certificate. So, um, okay, cannot get the server certificate. So in my case, okay, in this case. Uh, cannot get the server certificate, you will want to run the packet capture. Uh, but since my my laptop, the work laptop, it has some dec uh, decryption going on here for when I'm connecting to the VPN. So this this the reason for the reset could be that the decryption is resetting the connection because it doesn't like whatever uh, is whatever the, our firewall is seeing on uh, in our network. So what you would do here is try, in my case, I would get out of my uh, corporate network and then try to run a packet capture again to see if I can see if I can find that uh, certificate. Because the clues that we have is that we cannot get the server certificate. So there is something wrong with the, uh, or Global Protect thinks there might be something wrong with the certificate for my, uh, for my global protect portal. Catholic portal, uh, this is the portal, right? Yeah, this is the portal. This is the, yeah, portal. Okay. So, so and, from, and then from there, whatever you find um, will determine what, uh, what your next steps are. So here, cannot get certificate. Um, hmm, that's quite interesting. Uh, let's see if we can find any issues for this. Google protect. <clears throat> uh, nothing is an exact match. So in your case, the, you could open up a case with TAC using this information. Okay. But uh, further investigation here is, uh, yeah, I will want a capture without uh, outside our network without decryption. And then since I wasn't really expecting this, um, I don't have a next step if I do see that capture. Uh, double protect portal pre-login. Okay, the pre-login phase, there's an issue with the certificate. Um, one thing I can consider is set up uh, or create a new certificate and see if that helps. Uh, if uh, if you're using self-signed certificates, that'll be easy. If you're if you're using publicly signed certificates, I'm not sure how convenient that would be for you. But I would uh, we from just from these logs alone, I would be focusing my investigation on this on the certificate that I've configured on the portal, specifically the uh, what was it? the TLS profile on the firewall and then the certificates that are configured in that profile.
Okay, but okay. So closing that out, I was actually expecting something else. So the error that I was expecting was this. GP is not connecting on Android. I wanted just I was expecting this error message here. As you can see, I've had that error before. This is when I was uh, testing this setup. So key usage incorrect bit. So in this case, you will have your X server. Uh, where is that? URL is pre login ESP, check server trusted. So here we can compare. Okay, uh, where's my other one? Uh, cannot get connect SSL fail. Connect SSL failed. Huh. Okay, that's not it. Connect SSL URL in Spanish. Let's see what's going on. And URL is. Oh, that's quite different from my tests. From my previous tests, I was seeing a domain, but now I'm seeing an IP address. Okay, that's quite interesting. Then maybe it might be my DNS records. This is. Uh, this is just a free DNS service that I'm using here to to create a record for my uh, domain. So that might be it. Uh, but nonetheless, so URL is okay. What happens when we do when we get the URL is here? Oh, it doesn't show. Okay. So URL is, and then it'll get the certificate, and then it will show the certificate here. So not seeing that. So I guess why we're seeing the uh, server cert error here. Cannot get server cert. So it, that's why we're not seeing that. So the, the app literally cannot get the server certificate. OK. Uh, OK. So uh, I can get back to you on this tomorrow, uh, this new issue. But for the issue that I was expecting, key usage bit incorrect. Pay attention to your key usage here. The, uh, this is the proper key usage for a server certificate. <coughs> server certificate. This, if you are using a uh, certificate which is which is uh, used for as an intermediate or a root CA, you will only have certificate signing. So this is uh, in, uh, the intermediate certificate. And the key usage for that is certificate signing. And then here you can see, oh, I don't have the subject, but this will be how it should look like on your uh, server certificate for Global Protect. Okay. Okay. Tomorrow we will continue the case studies. Um, and then I will we'll use this new issue that we're seeing and I'm seeing here as, as an example as well. And then Hopefully, we don't have any issues with the lab tomorrow. But thank you so much, everyone, for today, for coming in and then listening to me ramble about Global Protect. Um, I, <laughs> I love, I do like sharing, explaining things, how things work uh, to, to, uh, to you guys, just so, we, uh, just so we, you, we can enable you to support yourselves when you encounter an issue. And then also, when you open a case with the relevant information that enables us to get that case a lot of traction when it's opened, rather than us going back and forth with you uh, asking if it was a timestamp, uh, can we set schedule? Uh, can we? Can you set up or uh, prepare a test machine and so on? Right. With that, thank you very much, everyone. And then I'll okay. hand over. Uh, back I'll go ahead. And, uh, I do have a couple of things here at the end, uh, so I'll go ahead and take the screen sharing back over. Um, there was a quick question in there. Yes, the slides from the event will be available later. Once we get the actual videos posted from the event, these slides will be available there as well. So Angelo, thank you very much for today. I really appreciate it. I will thank you, Charles. Thank there. you for staying up because uh, I know it's quite late for you. Eh, it's only 3 a.m. outside Chicago, not a big deal. <laughs> so, all right, thank you very much. I'll let you go. Okay.